Hello and welcome to this TechnicForce tutorial. In this video we're going to discuss how to create a basic webinar setup in Webinar Loop. When you first sign into Webinar Loop, it's a good idea to do a bit of setup administration first. So you can start by going to your profile and customizing your profile information. Here you can customize your profile name, email address, telephone number, and profile description. You can also change your password, upgrade your package level, and set your time zone. By scrolling down, you can also see which webinars you are listed as a presenter on, as Webinar Loops supports multiple presenters per webinar. Next, you might want to go up to the Settings tab here and select SMTP Setup or Twilio Settings. Under the SMTP settings, you can add your SMTP for your email follow-up, and you can update your Twilio settings to support your SMS follow-up. You can also integrate your autoresponder, and Webinar Loop supports a wide variety of autoresponders. To jump right into your webinar setup, go to the Webinars tab in the admin bar. Once you've created several webinars, you'll see a table listing all of them here. To create your first one, click on the button Create Webinar. Here you can give your webinar a title. We'll just call this one First Webinar. And then we can give our webinar a subdomain. We might want to call this one First and the subdomain will end with .webinarloop.in. If you have a specific custom subdomain that you definitely want to have, it's good to create it early and then check for availability to see if that name is available. If that subdomain is available, it'll be marked with a green check mark. If you choose a subdomain that's already taken, and then you go to check on it, you'll see that you get an error and that this subdomain already exists. So go ahead and choose a subdomain that's unique and then give your webinar a description. And when you're ready, click Create Webinar. Now that we've created the webinar, our subdomain has been reserved. But we still have the opportunity to edit the subdomain, the title, or the description. We can also set the webinar language and choose the webinar type, either Live, which will be broadcast live directly over YouTube Live, Scheduled, which will broadcast our webinar at a specific date and time, or On Demand, which creates an evergreen webinar which can be viewed on demand anytime by the viewers. We can also adjust the status of the webinar to either enable or disable it. And we can upload a custom logo as well. And once we're done, we can save our changes. Now, if we scroll to the top, we'll see that we have a red pending light here. If we click on this, Webinar Loop shows us the steps that are pending before our webinar setup is complete. So as you can see, we've now completed the webinar details. The next step is to complete the videos. So let's close our pending checklist. And here we are on the details page. Let's advance next to videos. You'll notice that when the page refreshes, the details tab turns green to show that this step is complete. Here we are in the Videos tab, where we can provide the URL for the video that we want to use as the main video for the webinar. Webinar Loop supports YouTube, Vimeo, Wistia, Dailymotion, and Direct MP4 links. So to start, choose the source platform, either Vimeo, YouTube, Wistia, MP4, or Dailymotion. In this example, let's select Vimeo. Next, we can input the video URL, and then specify the video length. And when we're done, click Save. Now our main video for the webinar has been attached. Next, we can go back to the Pending button and see what the next steps are. We can see that details and videos are now complete. Our next step is to fill out the schedule. And that covers the basic webinar setup in Webinar Loop. We'll cover the various other aspects of webinar setup in other tutorials. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks very much for watching.